This is an exercise to practice your understanding of independence. We'll get you started and most of the details you'll need to work out. So in this exercise, we are given two random variables, x and y, and we're told that they're independent. And we're also told that they're equally likely to take on the values of negative one or one. And what we mean by this is that the probability that x equals negative one or one, or that y equals negative one or one is equal to one half. Then we're also going to consider this random variable z, which is the product of x and y. So the first exercise is show that x, y, and z are not independent using conditional probability. And I'll leave that entirely up to you. And the second thing we want to show is that z is independent of y and z is independent of x. And we won't worry about x and y because we're told that they're independent. So essentially we're showing that these random variables are pairwise independent. So for that it would be two variables. That's what we mean by pairwise. So for k-wise independence when k equals 2, we say that they're pairwise independent. So that's what we're showing here. So now let's get started. And I'm going to start you off with showing that z is independent of y. The argument is similar for showing that z is independent of x. Okay, now to start, I have drawn what is essentially the sample space for z, all the possible outcomes. So I took all of the values of x and y and what the corresponding value of z would be. Now, the first thing we want to observe is that since we're given that x and y are independent, we can figure out the probability for each of these outcomes for z by just taking the product of the probabilities of x and y. And as a result, each of these outcomes for z occurs with probability one quarter. So what this implies then is that the probability that z equals one or that z equals negative one by just adding those, the probabilities of those outcomes is equal to one half. This chart is also a very useful um, for showing that these random variables are not independent. Okay, so now we want to consider a specific event. So we want to consider the event that z is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1. Okay. I have circled this event in the chart is sort of dotted circling. So there's only one of these possible outcomes where y is equal to 1 and z is equal to 1, although they both take on the value 1 in two different places. So there's only one of these, so we know that this probability is equal to 1 fourth, and that is equal to 1 half times 1 half. Okay, so now we want to look at this in terms of conditional probability, the same. So the probability that z equals 1 given that y equals 1. Okay. There's a few ways to look at this. So the first way we'll see is that in this chart, um, if we're given that y equals 1, the only way that z will equal 1 also is if x is equal to 1. So this is equal to the probability that x is equal to 1, which we're given is one half. And this is also equal to the probability that z is equal to one, which is what we want to show. But we can also use um, the definition of conditional probability to show this. So we know that the probability of z equals one and y equals one is equal to one quarter. And then we'd have to divide by the probability that y equals one, which we're also given as one half. And so we know this probability is one half by just using the definition of conditional probability. So in order to make more progress on this exercise, you have to actually show this for all the possible values that z and y can take. And the argument for x is analogous to showing that um, z is independent of y is similar argument for showing that z is independent of x. There's another thing I want you to consider too is that this function, 
where we define z to be the product of x and y is very similar to the bitwise exclusive or function. And what I mean by that is when x and y take on the same value, or with bits we'd say they have the same parity, meaning they're both the zero, they're both one, the exclusive or is equal to zero, and z in this case is equal to one. And when they have different parity, when x and y have different values, or with bits you have zero, one, and one, zero, the value of the exclusive or is equal to 1, and in this case z is equal to negative 1. So a way to extend this is to think about how you could use this with sets of bits when sets of bits would be pairwise independent when you take the exclusive or of those. So that's a, another exercise for you to think about, but the more tangible one is just convincing yourself of the independence of the pairs of the random variables. Thank you.